Hello and welcome to Life Admin 365 and welcome to today's whole week meal prep and meal plan. It's been a long time since I did a whole week's meal plan and meal prep video. So many events and celebrations in August that I did not have any time to edit a full length video. All I did was record videos as and when possible and create a few shots here and there. I have already shared those short videos on my channel so if you haven't already checked them do check those out. With that said let's get started. For Monday, I made Alu Suji Puris. I'm starting by soaking 2 cups of fine suji or rava in 2 cups of water. Ratio of suji to water is 1 is to 1. In that time, I'm grating 2 boiled and peeled potatoes. A couple days earlier, I had boiled potatoes for making dosa bhaji but never ended making it. So perfect use for them right now. Suji has soaked for about 15 minutes and all of the water has been absorbed. In go the boiled and grated potatoes. Cup wise, they are about cup and a half tightly packed. Then go in 6 finely chopped green chilies, 1 tablespoon crushed kasuri methi, 1 tablespoon chopped cilantro stems, 1 teaspoon cumin coriander powder, 1 teaspoon rubbed ajwain and salt per taste. Mash herbs, spices, suji and grated potatoes to get a homogeneous mixture. I'm transferring this mixture to my trusted KitchenAid stand mixer bowl and to it adding about 1.5 cups of atta or whole wheat flour. Adding atta just enough to knead the mixture into dough without addition of any water from the top. Adding in 2 tablespoons of oil in parts during the kneading process. Since I'm making puris, I'm looking for a firm dough and not a soft dough. Adding another tablespoon of oil to coat the dough ball. This is an optional step and you can skip but I like to coat the dough before I keep it for resting. This prevents the dough from drying out. Covering and resting the dough for 10 minutes. Then removing the dough from container and kneading it lightly. Portioning out the dough in 14 to 15 pieces. I'm making slightly larger puris and just enough for today's lunch. Starting to heat oil in kadhai and in that time rolling out puris from the portioned out dough pieces. Once I've checked that the oil is hot enough, I'm frying puris. Rolled out puris should be on the thicker side and not thin, otherwise they will end up turning hard and not puff up. These are turning up perfect. Now only if I could keep them puffed for more than a few minutes. You know what I mean? Anyways. Kids smell the freshly made puri, so instead of waiting for me to serve them, they just gorged on this puri standing right next to me. These are few of the ones that I saved for Melin and he too wanted some more. Since it was aloo puris, I did not make a sabzi on the side. Instead, I served them with spicy yogurt and a few cucumber slices. For dinner, I made some more puris from the remaining dough and that's what boys ate. And for Melin and myself, I made some bajri pohe. For bajri pohe recipe, please check the description box below or the link above. Moving on to Tuesday. For Tuesday, it was full-fledged roti sabzi dal chawal meal. Started by kneading dough for rotis in my KitchenAid stand mixer. This mixer helps me prepare perfect dough for rotis, letting the dough rest until sabzi gets ready. Decided to make mixed vegetable sabzi using small portions of veggies remaining in my refrigerator. In hot oil, I'm preparing tadka of cumin seeds, hing, turmeric, few fenugreek seeds and red chilli powder. Then adding in chopped onions and sautéing these for a minute or so. After onions have browned, I'm adding 1 fourth cup of tomato puree, some salt and sautéing the whole thing for another minute or so. Then adding in cubed carrots and potatoes and giving it a quick stir. Adding water. Mixing well, covering and cooking on medium heat for about 4 to 5 minutes. Uncovering, adding in frozen green peas, goda masala and jaggery. Mixing well, covering and cooking for 2 to 3 more minutes. In between, I added half a cup water, stirred everything and cooked covered for another couple minutes. Uncovering, mixing and checking for doneness. Potatoes and carrots are cooked and sabzi has come together. Mixed vegetable sabzi or mixed vegetable bhaji like I say is ready. While sabzi was cooking, I quickly transferred thawed out frozen amti into a pot and started reheating it. With bhaji and amti prepared, only rice and rotis were remaining. Preparing rice in the same pot that I prepared bhaji in. Sometimes I cook rice like that. Dry roast rice in pan for a few minutes, add water and bring it to a boil and cook on medium heat until it gets done. And the last thing to do is make rotis. Quickly rolling out rotis and roasting them and in no time lunch is ready to be served. I like to roll out most of my rotis before I can start roasting them. When I'm towards the last two or three rotis, I start heating tawa so that by the time my last roti is rolled out, first one is ready to go on the hot tawa. I also like to use a small kerchief to press on the edges of the roti 
instead of using a flipper or spatula. I think it gives me more control plus it helps me turn the roti around the tawa very quickly without burning or without it crisping too much. As soon as the roti has come off the tawa, I'm quickly pressing it between my palms to remove the air, then applying oil and folding and keeping it in the container. Removing air prevents excess moisture accumulation in the stacked rotis and keeps them soft for a longer time. For dinner, once again prepare rotis and serve them with leftover sabzi and amti from morning plus loki sabzi that my friend shared with me. Moving on to Wednesday. Today's lunch is exclusively from the leftovers which made for a different but interesting meal for lunch. There are leftover boiled potatoes, rice from Monday and yesterday and brown edges and the last few slices of the bread loaf that I cut up. I always cut up the last slices of bread and keep them frozen so that when enough are accumulated, I can turn them into bread upma or bread crumbs. I'm grinding half of these bread cubes and turning them into soft crumbs and the remaining half, I'm toasting them at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for about 8 to 10 minutes. And I'm grinding them to get fine breadcrumbs. In this bowl, I have leftover rice from two days along with soft breadcrumbs and grated boiled potatoes. To these, I'm adding finely chopped onions. Then go in salt and half a teaspoon amchur powder. And lastly, four chopped green chilies and cilantro stems. Mashing and combining the ingredients and forming a dough. Portioning it out into as equal portions as possible and then pressing each portion lightly in my palms to form balls. Then one by one dipping the balls into the dried fine bread crumbs and lightly flattening and coating them on all sides to get a patty or cutlet about half inch thick. In the meantime, I'm turning on my electrical griddle to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and within couple minutes it's ready to go. Adding in 2-3 to three tablespoons of oil, spreading it around and placing the coated cutlets on it. Cooking cutlets on each side for about 3-4 to four minutes or until each side is brown to the desired lightness. Taking them off the griddle. I was able to get 8 medium sized cutlets from the leftovers. Boys love them so much and wish there were more for them just to snack on. Next time I'll plan and have plenty of leftovers so that I can make more than 8. Then there were about three leftover rotis. Milin had a last minute unplanned dinner meeting yesterday. So these rotis are remaining from that. I think most of us grew up eating leftover roti, churma or ladu. Simply tearing these rotis, grinding them with jaggery and very little ghee and churma is ready. Sometimes I just like to eat that and other times I turn them into laddus. Boys were at their plate and were going to have lunch with their friends. These were just for the two of us. For dinner, I made plant-based burgers and steamed broccoli on the side and called it a night. On to Thursday. Thursdays are pretty much the same most of the time. Make sabudana khichdi for lunch for all of us and moong dal khichdi for dinner. For sides, there was papad, pickle and farsan. Before going to bed, I soaked kabuli chana or chickpeas for tomorrow's meal. Friday is here and for lunch, I have chole on my menu. After soaking chana yesterday, I realized that the container that I used wouldn't be large enough to hold it once the chana soaked. So immediately, I split the soaking chickpeas into two containers. My plan is to use one portion for making chole and the other portion for making falafel. So I'm pressure cooking only one portion of the soaked chickpeas. We'll drain out water from the other portion and refrigerate it for making falafel at a later time. Pressure cooking these for 5 whistles on medium heat. Opening the cooker only after pressure has released naturally and looks like these have cooked perfectly, not soggy at all. I already have pre-made basic masala from a couple weeks earlier that I took out from the freezer a few hours earlier in the day. Each of these cubes is about one third to half a cup. I'm using all of these four cubes and adding them to a pot heating on medium heat. Once these have nicely heated and come together, I am adding pressure cooked chickpeas to it along with a cup of water and giving everything a good mix. Once they come to a rolling boil, adding in chole masala and salt per taste and mixing once more. And that's it. Most of the times my frozen masala cubes like the ones that I use today have basic herb and spices so there isn't much for me to add in terms of spices. Rolling out rotis and roasting them and now that they are ready, I am ready to serve lunch. Roti, chole and sliced cucumbers it is. These cucumbers are my substitute for sabzi for the day. We ate same choli and rice for tonight's dinner as well. It's Janashtami celebrations tonight and I'm going to go for a couple of celebrations at my friend's house. At one of my friend's place, I'm taking pista mava pedha and at other friend's house, I'm taking badam ilaichi mava pedha. These are instant pedas made from milk powder and are very quick and easy to make. I made about 20 to 22 of each type to offer as prasad for kanha.
It's Saturday and it's a super exciting day for Fairlawn Indian residents as we are celebrating India's 75th Independence Day and our first ever cricket tournament. We have our Towns Council women in attendance today, honoring our Karma Bhumi United States and our Matra Bhumi Bharat with respective national anthems followed by flag hoisting. <laughs> While our children beautifully rendered U.S. national anthem, our parents and senior citizens hoisted Indian national flag and sang Indian national anthem. A goosebump moment for all of us. I got my face painted with Indian flag and a tikka of Indian flag. So much fun. Plus, there were cricket matches in the background happening. My throat was sore from cheering for our women's cricket team. A huge round of applause and congratulations to all our organizers, volunteers and participants as well as our town's municipal office for making this event super successful and memorable for all of us. There was plenty of food ranging from biryani raita to samosa chutney and the goodies and beverages for the in-betweens. I've definitely missed out on filming videos of a food table. Food was delicious and it was sold out in no time. I got to go boxes of the food for our home and that's what we ended up eating for our dinner. It's Sunday and I'm super duper tired from yesterday's exciting day. Honestly speaking, I don't recollect what we ate for Sunday lunch as I did not record it and it's not on my meal plan either. So I'm guessing it was either frozen parathas or, or egg omelette. For dinner, we had our friends visiting us from West Coast and initially we had planned to go out for dinner but last minute our plans changed and instead we decided to chill out and hang out at home and do a lot of gup shop and eat some snack kind of food. So that's what I have here. And that brings us to the end of this week. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed watching today's video, do give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more meal planning, meal prepping, recipes and home organizing ideas. See you all in the next one.